Today, let us take some time to study God's Word with the sermon titled, God is the Center of the Universe and the Center of the Bible. God commanded the prophets and the apostles in each age to record all the words of the 66 books of the Bible. Through this Bible, we should understand the profound will of God. The Bible also teaches us the reason why all humans came to this earth, the place we will eventually go, and the fact that when we die, we do not perish on this earth, but return to the world where we came from. Therefore, you and I must be the ones who absolutely believe that God governs and guides our entire lives. Then, who is the center of the Bible? Didn't Jesus say in John chapter 5, verse 39, these are the very scriptures that testify about me, meaning God? All mankind must know God. Through the Bible, doesn't God teach people the correct faith, how to correctly recognize God, how to receive and revere Him, although He comes in a different form, and how to obey and follow all His words? When we think about the premise that God is the center of the Bible and the center of the universe, we may ask ourselves, what will happen to our faith without God? If we claim to have faith, but there is no God at the center of our faith, it would be meaningless. We would not be able to receive salvation or forgiveness of sins. Without God, faith cannot exist. What about a church without God? What would happen if a church gives praise to God even though He is not present in that church? Nowadays, there are numerous churches, like the sand on the seashore, but since God is not at their center, who do they have as their center? Either the pastor becomes the center, or a new leader becomes the center. People commit the error and foolishness of putting their words above God's words and laws. The reason is that there is no God in that church. Is there any meaning to the system of truth without God? Aren't the truth of the Passover and the Sabbath day so valuable because God exists? That is why we must always put God at the center of our faith. Nowadays, there are many churches around us but there are many cases where the church fails to carry out its role, mission, and function because God is not there. Let us think about one more thing. Does worship without God, praise without God, or prayer without God have any meaning? All of this is meaningless. In order for all of this to have meaning, who must exist? God must exist. Since God exists in our church, our faith shines. Even though our church may receive hindrances from its surroundings, isn't our church leading mankind to the kingdom of heaven? It is all because God exists in our church. Then, don't we need to know well about the God who is with us? Let's turn to the book of Hosea, chapter 6, verse 6. In Hosea, chapter 6, verse 6, it says, For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. The Bible teaches us that God wants mankind to acknowledge Him. Many people in this world focus on this earth and pursue material and worldly things, investing their time, money, and efforts to attain them throughout their lives. 
However, they say, I don't have time to know God. I am too busy. In this way, they are heading toward the wrong direction and wasting their opportunity to know God. Everyone, is there anyone who was born with the thought, I want to become rich while living on this earth? From the moment they were born, many people in the world have inherited the thought, I must acquire a lot of material things. However, when leaving this world, everyone leaves empty-handed. There is nothing on this earth that they can take with them. When God created human beings, He desired them to know Him more than anything else. Acquiring material possessions and living on this earth are indeed important. But ultimately, on the day when we return to the kingdom of heaven, the greater thoughts should be, have we lived with the proper knowledge and reverence of God? Have we obeyed His word? These are far more significant things to think about. Therefore, our faith without God, the church without God, the system of truth without God, and worship without God are meaningless and useless. This is why the prophet Hosea awakens us to the fact that we should press on to acknowledge God. Let's move on to the New Testament and turn to Colossians chapter 2, verse 2. In Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, it says, My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know. Whom does the Bible say we should know? We should know Christ, who is the mystery of God that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ. Verse 3, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Christ are hidden the answers to these questions. Where will all humans go when they leave this world? Will they vanish as a handful of dust from this earth? Or is there something else that will bring them to a new starting point? Where are all these treasures of wisdom and knowledge hidden? The Bible teaches us that they are all hidden in Christ, who is the mystery of God. Today, the number of the people who claim to believe in God is as many as the sand on the seashore. Even though many people believe in God, how unfortunate would it be if no one acknowledges and believes in God correctly? Therefore, what does the Bible say about the mystery of God? To realize Christ is to know the mystery of God. This is what God wants for mankind. At the time of Jesus' first coming, the Jews believed in God and claimed to know God and the Bible, but they failed to truly recognize Christ who came to this earth. In the age of the Holy Spirit, too, there are numerous churches, and some boast about having read the Bible 500 times or even a thousand times. Even though they have read the Bible several times, they fail to realize the message that God is trying to deliver to mankind. That is why they do not receive Christ who came a second time nor do they find the truth about God the Mother, the Bride. At Jesus' first coming, many people who claimed to believe in God did not fully recognize and receive God in the flesh. Likewise, people today do not recognize Christ, An Sang Hong, who has come to this earth a second time in the flesh and New Jerusalem, Heavenly Mother. There is a reason people cannot fully understand the Spirit and the Bride. Let us find the answer through the Bible. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 3. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The God of this age. Whom does the God of this age refer to? It refers to Satan 
who is described as the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The God of this age has, what has he done, aligned the minds of unbelievers. It says that Satan has blinded people's minds. Satan has blinded people's minds so that people cannot distinguish truth from falsehood or see the light that displays the glory of Christ. How can a man become God? If God comes, he must appear in a great country like the United States. Why would he come to such a small and poor country? They are expressing their thoughts in this way. Behind their thoughts is the God of this age. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Let's move on to verse 6. For God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, made His light shine in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. The God of this age has blinded the eyes of people. However, God has opened our eyes and allowed us to see the light of the knowledge of God's glory. When Jesus asked his disciples, Who do people say I am? Their answers were, Some say one of the prophets. Some say Jeremiah. Some say Elijah. Jesus then asked them, Who do you say I am? Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by people of this world, but by your Father in heaven. Everyone, knowing God is the greatest fortune and happiness. We must have the correct understanding about God, who is the center of the universe and the center of the Bible. Isn't this the only way for us to be qualified to enter the eternal world that God has opened for us? This is why our enemy, the devil, who is the God of this age, always blinds people's minds. How can the son of a carpenter be God? How can this man recite scripture when he has never been taught? With such various words, they mocked, ridiculed, and slandered Jesus, causing people's minds to become blind. In spite of such situations, God taught Apostles Peter, John, and Paul the correct acknowledgement of God. Likewise, God made His light shine upon us to give us the glorious light of the knowledge of Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. Isn't it why we can confidently say, Father An Sang Hong is our God, and New Jerusalem, Heavenly Mother, is our spiritual mother? All the people of the world read the same 66 books of the Bible. However, the God of this age has covered the whole world with darkness. When we go back to the time of Jesus' first coming 2,000 years ago, there were many religious leaders who claimed to believe in God. They had all the secular power, authority, and influence over the church. Despite having all these things, what did they do when God came to this earth? They failed to recognize Him. They crucified God, whom they had worshipped. They spat on Him. They picked up stones and attempted to attack Him. They uttered all kinds of insults at Him without hesitation. It was all because the God of this age blinded their minds and made them confused. However, God made His light shine upon us to give us the light of the knowledge of God. We all look at the same Bible, but people have different perspectives. This is because they learn from human knowledge. However, what about us? It is written in the book of Isaiah that God will teach us. 
Jesus says, everyone who has heard the Father and learned from Him comes to me. Also, among the prophecies of the prophet Micah, what will God do in the last days according to Micah chapter 4? He will teach us His ways. Who made His light shine upon us to give us the light of the knowledge of God? Didn't God Himself come to this earth and make His light shine upon us? Didn't He teach us the truth about the Bride of the Spirit saying, I follow Mother? Isn't it a great joy and blessing that we have received the light of the knowledge of God? Then what kind of future was waiting for those who claimed to believe in God 2,000 years ago? Let's take a look at the Gospel of Matthew chapter 23. In Matthew chapter 23, verse 13, Jesus says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Jesus himself gave this judgment directly to the Pharisees and the teachers of the law at that time. Let's move on to verse 33. You snakes, you brood of vipers, how will you escape being condemned to hell? On the outside, they had an impressive temple, secular power, and even religious authority all at once. However, in the eyes of Jesus, they appeared as nothing more than a brood of vipers. They did not say to Jesus, You are the Christ, the center of the universe. You are the center of our faith and the center of the Bible. What good would it be for them to be high priests if they do not have the knowledge and wisdom to know God? Back in the Chosun dynasty in Korea, there existed the secret royal inspector. The royal inspectors discerned whether the governor was carrying out the king's will, doing benevolence or malevolence to the people. The royal inspectors were secretly dispatched for this reason. They had the authority to impose immediate punishments and conduct judgment on the spot. They enforced the king's power. When Jesus came to this earth in the flesh, he also gave a verdict directly by saying, all these people will be condemned to hell. At that time, numerous religious leaders turned away from Jesus. But apostles Peter, John, and Paul recognized Jesus and received him. Even at the moment of their deaths, they proclaimed, The center of the universe is God, and the center of the Bible is God. That God appeared on this earth in the flesh. Although others do not believe in God and the world does not follow the truth of the Bible, should we resemble their actions? Those who will be saved must respect and follow the teachings of the Bible. We must obey all the teachings of the 66 books of the Bible, never forgetting that they are the way of truth that God has given us. Let us take a look at this age. According to Hebrews chapter 9, how does it say God will come to bring salvation to those who are waiting for Him? It says that He will come a second time in the same form as His first coming 2,000 years ago. God informed us that He would not come with the name Jesus, but with a new name, to the easternmost country on earth. The prophets also explained about Christ who will come in the last days. Let's see the book of Hosea, chapter 3, verse 5. Hosea, chapter 3, verse 5 says, Afterward, the Israelites will return and seek. Whom will they seek? The Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to David and to his blessings in the last days. 
King David died about 250 years before the prophet Hosea wrote this book of prophecy. Even though he is no longer alive on this earth, whom will they seek? It is written, they will seek David and come trembling to God and to his blessings in the last days. Then, this David is not the physical David. Let's move on to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, to find out the prophetical David. In Luke, chapter 1, verse 31, it says, You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him what? The throne of his father, David. Whom does he refer to? It refers to Jesus. God will give the throne of David to Jesus. Let's see verse 33. And he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. David, who was prophesied by the prophet Hosea, represents Jesus. Jesus was given the throne of David. It is written, He will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. However, as you are well aware, at Jesus' first coming, he came to this earth, was baptized at the age of 30, led the kingdom of the gospel for three years, and ascended to heaven. Although it is written he will reign forever and ever, he finished the gospel ministry in three years at his first coming. Let's move on to 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 4. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned. How long did he reign on his throne? Forty years. In Luke chapter 1, verse 31, it is written, God will give him the throne of his father David. Then Jesus must be anointed at the age of 30 to reign over his throne. Only when he reigned for 40 years after becoming king can we say that he fulfilled the prophecy of David's throne. Let's take a close look at the life of Jesus. Let's see Luke chapter 3, verse 21. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Now, Jesus himself was about, how old was he? 30 years old when he began his ministry. Jesus was baptized and began to preach at the age of 30. In the book of Luke chapter 4, his baptism is described as being anointed. Let's confirm that scene. Let's take a look at the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has, what has he done? Anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The writer of the Gospel of Luke describes Jesus being baptized and preaching the Gospel as being anointed to proclaim the Gospel. Then, doesn't the anointment take place at the enthronement ceremony of the king or the high priest? Jesus was anointed at the age of 30. In other words, he was baptized. Therefore, just as David became king at the age of 30 and reigned for 40 years, Jesus' reign had to last for 40 years. However, Jesus' ministry came to an end after three and a half years. In order for Jesus to fulfill the prophecy of David's throne, 37 more years are needed. 
How can this prophecy be fulfilled completely? Jesus must come to this earth a second time in the flesh. Does God reign in the Spirit only for 40 years? No, He doesn't. Isn't God the one who will reign forever and ever? The prophecy that God will reign for 37 years or 3 years is to be fulfilled while He is in the flesh. Therefore, He came a second time to fulfill the remaining prophecy of David. When David reigned over Israel, there was a law for the king to govern over the people with. Likewise, Christ, who came to this earth as the spiritual David, needs the law of life to reign and govern the spiritual heavenly people. What is that law? Let's see Luke chapter 22, verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. The scene in chapter 22 is about the Passover. Let's move on to verse 19. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup... What is this cup? The new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Concerning the new covenant, God has already established it as the law to govern over his people with through the prophecy in Jeremiah chapter 31. Wouldn't it be good to confirm that scene as well? Let's move on to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. What did Jesus say in Luke chapter 22, verse 20? This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied about the new covenant, and Jesus fulfilled that prophecy. Let's move on to verse 33. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put, whose law will God put? My law. Just as David had a law when he reigned over the Israelites, God established the law of the new covenant between him and his people and called it my law. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be, who will God be? Their God, and they will be my people. There must be a law between Christ, who is prophesied as David and his people. The prophet Jeremiah teaches us that it is the law of the new covenant. Christ led the kingdom of the gospel for three years and reigned over his people with the law of the new covenant at his first coming. Then what about his second coming? How will he reign over his people for the remaining 37 years? Of course, he will reign with the law of the new covenant. If he governed and reigned over the kingdom of the gospel with the law of the new covenant at his first coming, shouldn't he come with the law of the new covenant at his second coming and fulfill the prophecy I will be their God, and they will be my people. Who is the prophetical David, who led the gospel kingdom for 37 years with the law of the new covenant? He is Christ Ansang Hong. This is why God says, I will lead all the children of Zion into the truth with the law of the new covenant, both at my first coming and second coming. Please know that I am He. Therefore, what did the prophet Isaiah write in Isaiah chapter 25? What should we do when we meet the one who swallows up death forever with aged wine, that is, the wine of the new covenant? Who is He? Surely He is our God. 
We trusted in Him, and He will save us. How will He save us? With the decrees, regulations, and laws of the New Covenant. Heavenly Father, An Sang Hong, is our Christ, who led the entire work of the Gospel for 37 years with the law of the truth of the New Covenant. The Sabbath day, baptism, the Passover, the seven feasts and three times, and the veil regulations. No one could restore the truth of the new covenant of the early church. Only when God comes to this earth can everything be restored and made whole. Not just anyone can bring the law of the new covenant to this earth. The God of this age has blinded the minds of everyone. Even though God came to this earth, people cannot receive Him properly. Instead of being grateful for God's grace, they complain, asking questions such as, Why am I struggling so much today? Why is life so painful? This can only be seen as the result of the light of the knowledge of God's glory not yet being displayed enough on them. The Bible and the prophets have brightly shown the light of the knowledge of God in our hearts. Aren't we now all coming towards the truth of the new covenant Passover that was once destroyed and ruined? Aren't we fully observing the Sabbath day of the new covenant? Some people ask, doesn't the Seventh-day Adventist Church keep the Sabbath day? However, their Sabbath day starts from Friday. It is not the complete Sabbath day. God restored the truth of the New Covenant, walked the life of David completely, and reigned over the kingdom of the gospel of the New Covenant. Let us remember our Heavenly Father, who came with the name Jesus at His first coming and with the new name Christ An Sang Hong at His second coming and reigned over the Gospel Kingdom. We must never forget the words of truth Heavenly Father left for us. I follow Mother. I ask you once again to remember His words so that when Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, the Spirit and the Bride, call to all mankind, come to Me, we will not hesitate to run to them with all our hearts. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.